good morning, Friendship Village. This is your Voice of Friendship Village coming at you once again with another podcast and a very interesting guest that we'll meet shortly. And uh, we like to say that we have the best guests ever for our interviews and uh, we learned some very interesting things. So, so we're happy about that and happy that you're listening to us this day. Uh, you know, today we always like to have a sponsor for our programs and today's sponsor is the ladies in the craft room. And uh, Mary knows more about this than I do, so I'll let her say a little bit more. Okay, uh, we have a nice little craft room here on second floor and we meet there on Monday mornings and we uh, do a variety of crafts. We can either do crafts or we can sit and have coffee and treats and we do both. Uh, we have made cards, all kinds of greeting cards that we put in a box and they are free for anyone that wants a card. We do not charge. We make uh, little mementos for the people in the med center uh -huh. and take them over and distribute them. We make uh, projects for the gift case down by the cove and we have people that come in and make things and use some of our supplies. We have cupboards and cupboards full of supplies and they can use supplies to make gifts to put in the gift case so that we can sell and that money goes towards a med center. So we have a lot of little projects we do. Nothing uh, that's gonna take a lot of time. It might take us a couple get-togethers to do it, but we enjoy it. We have a lot of conversation going on. We learn a lot of things. <laughs> so um, it's it's not all just conversation. You actually do some work. There. Yes, we actually do some work. We actually accomplish a I've, few things. I've seen the little crosses that you've made for the. We still are got them though. We can't take them over. Well, that's we'll get them delivered true. maybe by holiday time. Yeah. Maybe they'll want you to wait until the, the people officially move into the new unit at the med center. Well, this is mainly for the med center, so it wouldn't yeah. have to do anything with the people moving in. You mean more people in the well, med center? I mean, we better take them over while we have just the amount in that med center right now. Mm -hmm. That's okay. all we've got made. Yeah. But anyway. See, on um, Donna was going to take care of it. Well, she did try yeah. a couple times, but they, they wanted us to bring them over, and they would give them to them, and we didn't want to do that. No, we want to make a personal visit right. to each resident to hand them their cross. Right. Oh, and they cool. like that. They so I like to see somebody different. So. I don't know, maybe I should call again over there and see. It, are they open yet? So, oh, uh, where, is so that you've, already, said? you've already heard our guests talking and chattering. Oh, Sorry. Wait, we didn't get to introduce her. <laughs> <laughs> maybe so you can guess by now who it is. <laughs> yeah, I'm I didn't sure. Think it was true. The ringleader of the, of the ladies' craft room is Lucy yeah, Harris. Our guest today. She lives Hello, here in Friendship everybody. Village and she kind of uh, orchestrates things in the craft room. She knows where a lot of things are. She's a very helpful person and she's our guest today. All right. But we're going to back up quite a ways before we get to what we're doing. But we just wanted you to know that it's being brought to you by the ladies of the craft room. Right. And any lady is welcome to come to our craft room. That's right. They don't have to know how to do a lot of things. Even just for coffee. Yes, if you want to just come and have a cup of coffee, we welcome you. And we okay. have treats. We always have treats. Right. And the men have their craft. No, they don't do craft. <laughs> they don't the do men, craft. Pardon me. Right. The men meet across the hall and have conversation. And yeah. sometimes we share treats with them. They share I treats with us. I think most men would say, well, that's woman's work. It is woman's work. Well, yeah, men can crafts. do it. We know men can. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Anyway, back to Lucy. Okay. All right, let's start out with, where were you born, Lucy? I was born in Brandon, Iowa. Down where the frying pan is. Yep. Brandon. <laughs> and how long did you live there? All my life until I moved, after I graduated from high school, I moved, I worked for a family and I moved to Waterloo with them. And I was their nanny. Oh, how nice. She had a problem and so she needed help and so I was helping her. Good. And you had all 12 years or 13 in Brandon? 12. They had uh, wow. an elementary and high school there. Okay, it was a little bigger than it is now, probably. Yeah, there is none. There's nothing oh. there. Mm -mm. 
just the town. It's some kind of a plant. They use, I don't know what mm -hmm. it is in there. Okay. Well, yeah. where is Brandon? Just it's on the other side of Laporte. Oh, Laporte. I know that. Laporte City. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Down the That's a sign. Mm -hmm. Brandon. Brandon. Town of the largest frying pan, and we yeah. went in there one time and. Took a picture by the frying pan. <laughs> is it really the world's largest? I don't know. Frying I don't know if it's it the up. world's, but <laughs> <laughs> they put it up. It's, it's an interesting thing. Okay. Something that put Brandon on the map. It's right. beside a building that they have parties and so on. Mm, okay. Yeah. Right. It's worth a drive down there to see it. <laughs> so, how did you like being a nanny? I love it. Did I loved it. Yeah, yeah. Right. I worked for two different families. I worked for one when I was going to high school just to get extra money. Sure. Because I, when I was four years old and my brother was th uh, two, my mother died. Okay. And so the parents of my dad took us, and so we lived with the grandparents. So older people have always been close to me. I could get along with old people better than I could young people, mm -hmm. even when I was younger. Mm -hmm. So it was really nice to work with these people. Very nice. Okay. So how many kids were you looking after? Oh, one family only had two and the other one had three. Okay. So. Right. So uh, beyond high school then you never went to college? No. No, I never went to college. And then... Um, didn't have no money. That's <laughs> right. I didn't either. Um, when did you meet your husband? Um, when I was stayed in Waterloo, then, and the lady that I worked for helped me find a room and a job in which was bishops. So there was always a group of us went to the form roof to the dance every week. Well, there was um, a girl that I knew was going with the boy that Fred knew, and so they introduced, and that was it. That's history. <laughs> Fred. Fred Harris, your husband. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm on my way, on my way here this morning, uh, I noticed a truck and it said Harris Cleaning. That's, that's our business. That's yeah. your business. Mm -hmm. Okay. And right. when did he start that? Oh goodness, I should have looked it up. I don't know. Um, we got married in 52 and so it was shortly after that. Mm. Yeah. And it's still going? Still going. Our kids are doing it. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. And throughout the years, you had quite a family. Yep, we had nine. Wow. How many boys, how many girls? We have four boys and five girls. Oh, wow. Wow. So you had to have a big house. Well, we just kind of stacked up. <laughs> yeah, we did have a big house. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you, when had we some first... you had some built-in babysitters. Yeah, kind of a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> our poor oldest girl. She really, she was the biggest one that took care of everybody. Okay. And so all you, in all, it's very good, and they're so good to me. And your kids all were educated, and probably went on to some went to college, and some didn't. Yeah, they all got jobs, and some of them worked in your business. Right. Okay. Four of them. Four of them went to um, that run our business after, and then one had fallen off a roof. On a 15 feet down on his feet, so he had to retire. And one daughter, after 40 some years, she retired. So there's just the two boys now that's okay. Really... How many grandchildren do you have? Oh my, I got 20 grandchildren, and I can't even remember how many great I have to stop and count now. Mm -hmm. But quite a few, which and is nice. A lot of them live around here. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. good. But then we got them pretty well scattered all over, too. When was the last time you had a big, magnificent group well, picture? Well, before this virus. Oh, okay. Yeah. I used to have one every year oh. in the cove. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Harris family reunion, right? Right. <laughs> yep. And, and how long has your husband been gone? He'll be. He was. It was two years last August. Okay. Mm -hmm. This last August, I guess that was last month. Was and um, when did you move in here? Ten years ago, first day of March. Wow, ten years. It was snowing. And <laughs> oh, really? Okay. So he lived here quite a while with you. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. He said it was my idea to move here, but it really was his. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I kind of worried about him being in here because, well, he worked for a few years after we moved here, but he was a workaholic, and I thought, how is he going to 
be not doing nothing. Mm -hmm. He loved it. He thought it was the best place to live. You know, I've, I've uh, talked to Frank Alexander a few times. You know Frank, of Yeah, we live and, right uh, next door. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he loves telling that story yeah. Yeah. about uh, you guys live next door to each other for a mm -hmm. while. And uh, so th the first time that the Alexanders were there, the, uh, Thanksgiving came around. So you invited them to just come on over. Mm -hmm. So the doors opened, so they walked in, and, uh, and then one of your kids said to you, like, uh, hey, Mom, who are those people? And you said back to them, well, I don't know. I think they just walked in. <laughs> 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 oh, Frank enjoys yeah. telling that story. We lived story. in a condo, and they were right next to us. We played cards quite a bit, and he'd say, well, I guess we better go. we got a long ways to go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you guys, two couples have a lot of stories to tell. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah, they were very nice. And he certainly was appreciative of your husband cleaning his driveway. Yeah. <laughs> that was a big story, too. His yeah. Fred would always get up and clean. Our driveways are right together. Mm -hmm. So he would clean ours and theirs. Well, one of the neighbors called and turned it in and said, well, why isn't our driveway <laughs> mm -hmm. shoveled off before we had to wait for ours? Yeah. <laughs> oh. yeah. It's called the good neighbor policy. Yeah. Yeah, that again, he was a workaholic. Right, yeah. A lot of husbands were. Mine was. Yeah. Frank said he used to walk, he used to take a trip and he'd walk every morning out to the cemetery and he'd pick up stuff. You know, yeah. he was just cleaning. The it was funny because different people would uh, call him and say they knew he picked the stuff up. Did you find what blah, blah, blah? A lot of times he had. Oh. And so um, one time he found a billfold and papers that evidently they laid on top of the car and then drove off and there was a whole bunch of papers so he picked them all up and, and uh, <laughs> bit different people would call us. That's wonderful, yeah. wonderful. Well they could retrieve their lost articles. Right, right. Yep. right. Wasn't One was even a garage door opener. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> oh. But you know they put it on top of the car mm -hmm. yeah. and drive well. Take a break. Let's take a break. <laughs> Let's take a break from this stimulating and enlightening interview with our guest. And we want to just uh, say once again to our, for our listeners that this program is being brought to you by the ladies of the Arts and Crafts Room, who meet every Monday morning at 9.30 and do some, do some interesting and great work that uh, benefits the people here at Friendship Village, including and maybe particularly focused on helping the 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 residents who who uh, reside in the health center or the or the landing. We appreciate Lucy and and all the work that that her friends do. And uh, let me just take a break here and just share a quick joke. Would that be all right? Okay. So a husband and a wife enter a dentist dentist's office, and the wife says. I want a tooth pulled. I don't want any gas or Novocaine because I'm in a terrible hurry. Just pull the tooth as quickly as possible. And the dentist says, my, you're a brave woman. Now show me which tooth it is. And the wife turns around to her husband and says, dear, open your mouth, show the dentist which tooth it is. <laughs> and that, that's a good one. I yes, like that it. is a very yeah. good one. <laughs> I got another good one that I learned this morning, but I'll share that more at the end of the okay. at the end of our show. And we're about halfway through, right. so we're doing doing pretty well. Good. And uh, so we we appreciate all of our sponsors that uh, that help us out here on the on the podcast. And uh, so let's let's go back to uh, Lucy. Lucy, what else would be interesting to know about you? You do a lot of sewing. I do. Mm -hmm. I try to do, uh, make different things for the case stone. Right. I've seen some of your uh, clothing apparel that you have made for uh, different ones, children, small children and some. And I have made, um, for Brittany, I mm -hmm. made um, 12 Burke claws for her, mm -hmm. for the new baby, and some bibs, and just mm -hmm. useful things. Mm -hmm. And number one, you are a baker. 
<laughs> she bakes and bakes and bakes. She loves to cook and yes. bake, and we reap the rewards of her baking. <laughs> and the men the reap men? the rewards of her baking as well. Right. Morning. We have quite a thing going on there. So yeah. if you're if you want coffee on Monday mornings, come over, man or woman. We'll take you all. Absolutely. Mm. And join yeah. our group because we love to have people stop in and have a cup of coffee and visit and. You know, I have a hand in providing some uh, yes, you do. sweets for the men's group, but I'm used to it now, but the men always say, well, we're going to wait for the good stuff. <laughs> wait, wait for Lucy to come in with her platter of brownies or whatever. So you've been happy that you've moved to Friendship Village? Absolutely. And you would encourage your friends who are considering it? To I have. I was uh, one of the hosts one time from people coming in to look mm -hmm. at and I said, don't even think about it. Just move in. You'll love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And it is. It's just because I picture myself living alone in the house. No way. Yeah. I don't. I wouldn't like. I wouldn't be brave enough to do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And here you feel, you know, pretty secure. Oh yes. Yes. And I, I just love it. Yeah. We're surrounded by people. Right. And that's very important. Yeah. Especially yeah. when you get old. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We've we've made a lot of friends. We have a lot of people that help us out, do things for us, um, and we get to go to activities when they open up and let us do it. More activities outside of the building. Right. Right now, we we do activities in the building because we can do them with each other, and and some of the people doing them are work for Friendship Village, so they can come in and lead some of the uh, things that we do, the crafts. Uh, other crafts that we do down in the cove and we have our bingo and we have our wheel of fortune and, and our exercises oh yes exercises number one yeah. that's what we like to do too so um, uh, there's a lot to keep us busy and oh, another thing Lucy has a friend who has supplied us with tomatoes the majority of this uh -huh. end of summer type thing has brought in a lot of tomatoes for people to have it's my husband, or my husband, my son brought them in, but it's a neighbor of his that raises them. Mm -hmm. And I think next time might be the last. <laughs> well, it's getting towards the end of the season, but we have sure enjoyed the tomatoes. And he's been doing them for two or three years now. For yes. Us. I remember when I came over here uh, that first summer that there were tomatoes down there. Wow, somebody's really generous to us. Right. And he puts, I don't know how many plants, it's unreal. But he he has a shed evidently that he keeps them in. People will come in and get a bushel basketball of just a can. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's that yeah. kind of a person. Wow. Well, we sure thank him, and I think we did sign a card. And, and I have to give that to my son this last time. Mm -hmm. Or I imagine it'll be the last time. What is the man's name that that we are? Oh, that? Orland. I can't. I got it wrote down, but mm -hmm. I can't. Uh, I don't. I don't remember. Okay. Well, we sure do thank him. And another thing, you have a granddaughter, I believe, or great-granddaughter, who's about eight or nine or ten, who's an artist, and yeah. she has, she has... She uh, lives in California. Oh. So she's she the was one here, that she was here on a visit. Yeah. And uh, uh, Susie gave her a box of crayons to draw a picture, so she decided to draw a picture. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we were down there eating. Yeah, and did you and your husband used to winter any place, or did you stay around here? No, we never stayed anywhere. We t looked into things and talked about it, and I said, man, I had a little grandkids. I said, I don't want to leave them all winter. No? Okay. <laughs> so we just never did. Yeah. We went on vacations. Sure. But um, we've taken a couple cruises, and but we're just happy to come home. Did you ever go to another country? Um, we were in Germany. Mm-hmm. Oh. And my, um, um, let's see, what is he, nephew, uh, was in the Army. And so we went over with his parents, mm -hmm. which was Fred's brother. And we were there for a month. Hmm. And we went to Czechoslovakia, and I'm glad to get home. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> but it, it was a nice trip, a real nice trip. But I, I don't know, there's nothing like U.S. <laughs> That's right. That's right. It's fun to visit. I like to hear people's stories about visiting other countries. I mm -hmm. think they're very 
very interesting. It was very nice, and he took a leave and drove us all over, and we went on that with the highway that you just go. Oh, the the autobahn. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's so scary. You go as fast as you can. Uh, yeah. Is that it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't like that part. <laughs> <laughs> right. I got my rosary out. <laughs> so oh. <I'm> <laughs> okay. No, I would rather live here. Okay. Yeah, we're we're happy to live in what well, we would call it a small town type area. You know, we have a lot going on here. Right. And we have a good population, but it still seems like a smaller town. Yeah, it does. Yeah, mm -hmm. even though things happen that we can't control, but like again, we feel safe here and we can go out and do whatever we want to do. Right. Take advantage of opportunities within the community. So. I have a daughter, she went to college in Drake and and she ended up in Chicago, which she loved Chicago and I would care less. Yeah. <laughs> but it was fun to visit. Yes. But she worked for the Chicago Bulls she was the really yeah she worked um she i don't know what her title was but she would go ahead and line up parties and all this and that and and put all the beer in the right case and one time one of the guys that had another beer, kind of beer came in and they had to take all the beer out and put his guy <laughs> so that was her job and a lot of times you she'd be on, on the floor before uh, the game started, so mm -hmm. I always got to see her. <laughs> right, right. That's a good upper, good, good and thing to do. We go, and we always got to sit in a special place. Good. And, uh, <laughs> one time she had us picked up in a limousine, and I thought, oh wow, this is uptown. <laughs> Whoa, it really <laughs> is. It really is. Yes, limos are nice. But we used to get. Oh, we stayed where the bulls stayed when they weren't in town. Mm -hmm. Well, we got to see a lot. I see. Yeah. She must have been their social director or something mm -hmm. like yeah. that. Are, are, are you talking about people like Michael Jordan and yeah. Scotty Pippen and yeah. BJ? All of them. That's when I we would go. Now I don't even know any of them. Yeah, I, I'm in the same way. Yeah, I used to enjoy watching them. Really. Yeah, I don't but, know them, but I I knew them all. And I mean, we they would be right in front of us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's good. That's a, that's that's something to know. <laughs> and they had a room where they always, I don't know exactly, special guests or something. They'd have a room before the game that you could go in there and have Hospitality treats. Hospitality room. But we got to go in too. Sure you did. <laughs> oh, uh, you got to mingle with all the players. Yeah. Wow. I bet your husband liked that too. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Even if he didn't know what it was about, he'd still talk and get yeah. something out of him. <laughs> And has she retired from that job? Or yeah. she still? She had twins, okay. so she stayed home. Okay. okay. Mm. Yep. But uh, even after she stayed home, they kept calling her and calling her to find out what do you do this or what? How do you do yeah. That? So it was very interesting, but she was glad mm -hmm. not to do it anymore. Well, listen, we're coming to the end of our time. Is okay. There anything else maybe on your mind? Lucy or something in your heart you want to say? I'm not a very talkative person but I guess I have to thank my husband for getting us here. Okay. Yes, for providing the opportunity for you two to spend some time here together mm -hmm. before his time was up. I remember you coming to the chapel probably one of the first times I ever saw you when he was in the med center mm -hmm. and you would bring him into the chapel for our monthly mass right and I they said what your name was so I got to know mm -hmm. who you were I don't know if I ever talked to you or not I but don't remember yet. yeah but I remember yeah, we I used to take him to mass every, mm -hmm. every week mm -hmm. but, and well listen before we close today I want to just uh, say again thanks to the listeners for tuning in and if you have any any desire to maybe be a guest on our program and be interviewed and share some about your life, we'd be happy to have it. And uh, we ask that you would contact the secretary in the building in which you live and let your wishes known, and they'll be in touch with us, and we'll we'll take it from there. I I, I just have an urge to close with this joke. It's about a sweet grandmother. I, I'm, I know we have some sweet grandmothers out there. Okay. 
All right, so this sweet grandmother telephoned the local hospital and she said, uh, is it possible to speak to someone who can tell me how a patient is doing? And uh, the operator said, sure, I'd be glad to help you, ma'am. What's the name of the patient and the room number? So the grandmother said, uh, well, the name is Norma Finley and it's room 302. So the operator said, okay, I'll be right back. Let me go check on this with the nurse's station. And she came back in just a couple of minutes and she said, well, we have good news. The nurse just told me that Norma is doing well. Her blood pressure is fine. Her blood work came back normal. And her doctor is thinking of her being discharged tomorrow. The grandmother said, oh, thank you. That's wonderful news. And I, I was so worried. Just God, I want to say God bless you for the good news. And the operator said, well, ma'am, you're very welcome. Is, is Norma your daughter? And the grandmother said, no, I'm Norma Finley in yes. room 302, and no one tells me crap. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh, that is a very good one. Yeah. That's a good one. That's a good one to end on. So I think we're going to sign off on that note. And as we like to say, may the good Lord bless and keep you till we meet again. Goodbye for now. Goodbye. Goodbye.